ride this morning, which is pretty sunny but very windy Cambridge here. Uh, coming along the A10, I thought we'd go out through the Thetford Forest on the GSXS 1000. And I thought I'd do a, an on bike review, a little talk this morning about how the bike's going. The bike's going absolutely fantastic. I can't really say much, many negative things about it. Um, I don't know whether you've seen any of the, the previous videos uh, where I talked about fitting the Katana uh, throttle tube. Um, but uh, that's a, a mod well worth doing. It has a, a less aggressive cam profile than the standard one and really smooths out the small throttle openings. Uh, makes the bike much smoother to ride on a steady throttle, on a, on a light throttle, around town especially. Uh, so that's, uh, as I was saying, for about 15 to 7 to 20 quid and about 20 minutes work to fit it. It's uh, yeah, definitely well worth doing. Uh, something else that you can probably see is the fly screen. Uh, Tweed, MRA, uh, Suzuki, they all want around 100 quid for a fly screen. And for what's basically a bit of plastic and a bracket. Uh, this one was about 40 quid on eBay. Yes, cheap Chinese copy, let's mind the police car, thank you. Don't get in his way. Um, but it does it does the job. It, it definitely keeps the wind off my chest. Uh, if I was a bit a bit shorter and not freakishly long at uh, six foot four, it would uh, probably shoot some of the air over the top as well. But it's um, it's not bad. It, it, so it does a does a reasonable job. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, that's well worth a look. It's a bit of a fiddle to fit. You've got to drop the headlight assembly down and it's not so much that that's the problem. It's fitting the bracket that you then have to put the headlight assembly bolts back through and there's just no room to get your fingers in. Maybe I've just got chubby fingers. I don't know. Need a five-year-old to do it. They'd probably do it in about two minutes. But I haven't got one of those. <laughs> Anyway, it's very windy today. We've had some pretty interesting lean angles coming along the, eight, the, the 142 on the way to Ely, which is dead flat. We're up here in the fens, and it is dead flat up here, well, apart from a few little rises that we have. Now, a lot of people seem to be fitting bar end mirrors to these. Um, it must be just for looks, because uh, I think these mirrors aren't bad. Now, I must admit, I did think about it. But, um, I don't know. I don't know what people's thoughts are. I think it was, if it was a cafe racer, it would be good. It would look great, but um, it's not. So I'm probably not going to. Keep thinking about having it mapped as well. And, that, and get, getting rid of getting it decatted. And that maybe this, maybe I'll get, get that done this year. No, but to be honest, I'm just happy riding it as it is. No, I mean, I've got a, I've got a GSXR S Rad track bike, and that. So if I want to go mad, I do a track day. I don't really need to go much faster than this on the road. And that, but saying that, this is an absolute missile when you open it up. It's got the K5, K6 GSXR 1000 engine in it. So it puts out about 150 horsepower and a decent lump of torque. It's the long stroke engine that everybody used to rave about. I wish they brought this bike out sort of 10 years ago. As a proper 
jigsa naked. I hate that term, jigsa. I don't know why I bother, why I say it. It's not a jigsa. It's a GSXR. This is a GSXS. Big difference. Right, so let's get past this bloke. Switch the indicators off, tends to be less confusing for everybody else. Anyway, it's about the first time we've had a decent dry day. And that for the last month or so, we've had an awful lot of storms and heavy wind. It's been next to impossible to get out on the bike. That, which I've been itching to do because uh, my lovely wife Vivian has uh, bought me a present of a new HJC RPHA 11 helmet which I'm trying for the first time today I've got to say it's really nice very comfortable, it's light uh, loving the colour scheme which I'll uh, show you when I get back to the garage I think uh, it's the Jonas Folger replica and that, shame what happened to him and that great rider but struck down with a with an illness that he doesn't seem able to shake off just uh, wish him all the best first round of the world superbike series this morning from Phillip Island I'm not going to give any spoilers and that in case you haven't seen it but uh, three fantastic races great races three different winners Yeah, I think it's going to be a good season. Definitely going to try and get to Donington this year. That do uh, Saturday and Sunday, as well as the MotoGP. Doesn't that rather than working at it this, year, they're working at the MotoGP this year. I'm going to have a weekend off and uh, go and enjoy it. Hopefully, it will be as good as it was last year. Now then, out to Fetford or out to Swatham? What do we reckon? Um, let's go Fetford. Lovely gear change. so easy on a bike like this to suddenly realise you've uh, got into licence losing territory. Uh, and that's, uh, that would be a disaster because then I wouldn't be able to enjoy it. MCN have never done a, a proper review on one of these. It's kind of a it's kind of a an end of test review on one on their website, but it's not a proper it's not a proper road test. You know, I don't know why. Maybe they think it's not worth doing, maybe they think the bike's not very good. Um, I don't know. I think uh, I think it's very, very underrated, if I'm honest. Yeah, it's uh, it's built to a budget. It is. It ha does have sort of ch uh, budget rear shock, non-adjustable, apart from the apart from the rebound and the preload. Um, but there's no no compression damping, no high or low speed damping um, but I've got to be honest it's all right this one could probably do with being set up properly I did increase the predo a, a little bit and take a little bit of uh, compression damping off the front 
just to make it a, a little bit less jarring on the wrist. But uh, I've got to say, it's not bad. And the roads up here aren't great. They may look fast and sweeping and wide open, but the surface itself can be pretty lumpy at times. So, uh, yeah, I think the bike does a pretty good job, to be honest. Hello, mate. Morning. this fellow in a minute. He's looking in his mirror, he knows I'm here. So, uh, it won't be a surprise when we do this. See, and there we are, back out onto the the wide open fen roads. I know this road fairly well because uh, I work at Snetterton a fair, a fair bit during the summer. So uh, I know this is, uh, this is a good road. We like it. last year and it's only cheap stuff okay the, I think the trousers are their base model of about they're about 80 quid or so removable lining um, but much nicer to ride in than, than wearing jeans and not like I have been I have got full leathers but I tend do I wear them on the road sometimes I do wear them sometimes can am. That's uh, unusual. They always look a bit strange. They look like they should be leaning in the corners rather than staying upright. But they don't. They stay upright. So you tend to sit on it rather than in it. Let him go. <laughs> just for just for a second, I thought that was the old Bill. in a way here I do hope you can uh, you can hear me it's the first time I've done an on bike camera setup and I bought a separate microphone for the GoPro so I hope it's working otherwise this is going to be a very quiet video for the year. I think uh, I think we're definitely going to head up to Yorkshire. Maybe go up th through the Yorkshire Moors, end up at Whitby, somewhere like that over the weekend. And I'd like to do the Lake District. Particularly go up and see the Donald Campbell collection at, uh, in the Lake District. Nobody knows what I'm, you don't know what I'm talking about with the Donald Campbell. Up at Coniston is where he lost his life at 300 miles an hour. On a hot, big 
Lump. 300 miles an hour across Coniston water in a specially built hydroplane uh, a power boat. Nobody knows what happened. I suspect it was uh, because he turned round too quickly to attempt uh, in the opposite direction and hit his own wake um, or hit uh, something that was floating in the water. You can imagine at 300 miles an hour it doesn't take very much to launch the boat skywards and that's exactly what happened. But they've, uh, they've rebuilt the boat so I'd like to go up and see that. just uh, get out on this as much as possible. It's uh, much more usable than the, uh, the bike I used to have on the road which was a, a, a Kawasaki a ZX-10R, an 04 model. Uh, I sold that just before I bought this. I think it was probably about what, August last year, something like that. Very nice chap down in Croydon bought it off me. Done a bit of work to it. It's now got a, a quick shifter and launch control, which is good. But unfortunately, he's ruined it by putting an extended swing arm on it. <laughs> Sorry, mate, but uh, it looks bloody awful but each to their own. Nice chap. <laughs> I liked him. Uh, they're all right if you're doing a bit of drag racing. It's kind of nice when you come out on the bike and you don't really know where you're heading to. I got stopped by the police once. I used to live down near, near Staines, near Heathrow. Went out for a ride one Sunday morning and again, didn't really know where I was gonna head to. I figured probably south coast. And I was trundling along, going down through uh, East Greenstead. Not doing anything. Oh, this was on an R1. Uh, not doing anything uh, wrong, just trundling along like this behind other traffic. And this young chap in the in the young policeman in the car pulled me over, asked me why I'd stopped, why he'd uh, stopped me. And I said, no, sorry, I don't know why, what's going on? And he said, your number plate, sir, I can hardly read it. He was only just behind me and it was of a quite a small letterbox number plate. I was very tempted to say, well, sorry mate, but you shouldn't be driving if your eyesight's that bad. But I didn't. I held it in. And he said, can I ask where, you, where, where you're going? I said, I don't know. Just out for a ride. Can I ask where you've come from? I said, yeah, I live up near Staines, near Heathrow. You're an awfully long way from home, sir. So you've come from Heathrow and you don't know where you're going. I said, well, yeah, that's kind of the point of just going out for a ride. So I'd probably end up in a calf down by Brighton somewhere. And with that, he decided he was going to let me off with what they used to call a seven-day wonder which is to go to your nearest police station and produce your insurance documents, your tax and your MOT. And he made me get another MOT to put a, a standard size number plate back on it, which I did, and then promptly went home and took it off again. So that was a waste of time. But yeah, they can be, pretty, they can be a bit petty sometimes. That's right, pulled out in front of everyone. Couldn't have waited 
five seconds, could you? Because there's nothing behind us. You had to pull out right then. Sun can come out riding with me it's, uh, due to take his full test in the, within the next month or so. And then we can uh, father and son time, which I've been waiting for for a long time. And he's a good kid, very proud of him. So he's, last couple of months of uh, Suzuki apprenticeship. He's done very well. <laughs> so who knows, a, ca a career in motorcycles? I don't know. But we'll see. Whatever he does, I'm sure he'll, be, he'll make it a success. coming into Wheating, they've got an old castle here that's just ruins. We tend to get a lot of ghost hunters around at night. They're a strange lot. But I can say that because my wife's one of them. Love you Viv. So I think uh, I'll say goodbye for now. And who knows, uh, maybe we'll find somewhere else a bit later and we'll uh, do a bit more. Okay, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the little bell notification.